Psalm 100, verse 1. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. The title of the sermon is Make a Joyful Noise. Joyful Noise. Just like I was standing out there outside and I was hearing you guys sing, you know what I heard? I heard a joyful noise. The Bible says, Make a joy. This is a commandment. A commandment. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You say, I can't sing. I haven't got a good voice. It doesn't matter. The command is make it. It doesn't say, if you have a good voice, make a joyful noise. It just says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. So even though this is written at a time when we had Old Testament Israel as the people of God, that God was working in them in that Old Testament covenant, the command still, the desire of God was that all the lands would make a joyful noise unto Him. And of course, as we see uh, the rapture take place, and then in, in Revelation chapter 7, it speaks of uh, an innumerable number of people, of every tongue, of every tribe, of every nation. You see, there are people all across this world that are saved, and God wants a joyful noise to be made from all corners of the world. And that includes Australia. We're down under. We're kind of by ourselves with New Zealand a little bit, right? We're by ourselves, but God wants to hear a joyful noise even here in Australia. Verse number 2. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. You see, making a joyful noise, coming and praising and singing His praises is serving the Lord. Okay, It's a service that we're giving to the Lord. We're giving Him honor. We're giving Him uh, honor, honor, worship, and, and just the love and the praise that we can give His name. But God asks us, asks us not just to serve Him. He wants us to serve Him with gladness. He wants you to have a, a joyful heart as you sing praises to Him. Please, when you, when you open the hymn book, you know, please have your hearts in the right place. God is seeking your heart. He knows internally what's going, ahead, what's going on there. Yes, you can praise Him with your lips. We can see that. But God is looking at your heart. Are you serving Him with gladness? You know, sometimes serving the Lord is hard work. Going out soul winning, especially in hot weather, is hard work. But He wants you to serve Him with gladness. Everything that you do in service to this church, the body of the of, of the, of the um body of Christ or to the Lord in general, whatever service you do, even in your workplace, you ought to be serving the Lord in your workplace. You ought to be working hard at setting Christ as your master. All right, Whatever you do in the service of the Lord, He wants you to do it with gladness, with a joyful heart. And then it says, come before His presence with singing. Come before His presence with singing. Yes, Brother Jason, got your song leading up here. You're, you're coming in the presence of the Lord. You're doing it with singing, with praises. All right, it, that's all, that ought to be something that gives us great joy, okay? Great joy as we come to serve the Lord. Let's not be people in church with a sour face, you know, with, with a sad heart, with the wrong spirit. Whenever you come to church, always come and say, hey, I'm going to the house of the Lord. I'm going to see God's people there. I'm going to see my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And if I come with a sour face, if I come depressed, full of sorrow, hey, that, that can have a negative impact on others in the way they serve the Lord, Okay? Now, there are times that you're going to have sorrow. There are times you're going to be sad, all right? But try to set that aside when you come to the house of the Lord, okay? You can come to His house. You can pray about those things, find comfort in the Lord, and that will help you to make sure that you serve Him with gladness. You know, one sure way to, to um, you know, just to have gladness is try to put a smile, you know, on, on your face a little bit. You know, one thing that I, I learned just uh, working as a customer service manager, I, I never dealt with... with uh, uh, customers all that much. I never was really on the phone. But one thing that was very clear in the teaching with call center people on the phone, because the customer cannot see your face, they cannot see your body language, if all you do is have a smile on your face, I'll try to smile. All right, if all you do is have a smile on your face while you're talking to someone on the phone, it comes across on the phone. It brings a good, pleasant spirit across the phone, whereas if, if you're downcast, you've got a frown, that also comes across on the phone. Okay, so, and of course, you know, we're seeing each other um, but make sure you've got a smile. Make sure you greet one another. Make sure you, you make an effort to greet the people of God. Verse number three. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. And today we heard about, you know, the Lord God creating all things. But you know, our Lord, He is God. Such a strange thing. You know, we have many people. We have many animals, all right? There are many things, uh, you know, when, when we think of life, we can see many multi uh, multiples of that life. But when it comes to our Lord, He is God. There is, there is nothing else that we can compare God to. There is the one true God. And this is just a somber thought for us to remember 
that as we serve Him, as we praise Him, as we come with gladness, we need to remember He is God. He's our Creator. You know, He's, he's all-powerful, almighty. It ought to make, remind us that we, how frail that we are and how much we need the Lord. And yet, even though we're frail, even though we're weak, even though we have sin, the Lord says, look, praise me. Give me your worship. Give me your service. It's such an honorable thing for the Lord God of the universe to want your service. That's how special you are in His sight. And then it says here, it is He that made us. Okay, He created us. I already mentioned this in the sermon this morning. But He created, He made us. For the purpose of what? For His pleasure, but for the purpose that we would come and serve Him. That we would have glad hearts as we worship Him. Look, it is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. If you need to be reminded of that, hey, you, we did not come to be by our own will. You know, we didn't create ourselves. Man will never create living, another living man. It's, in, it's, not in his, it's not His possibility. It's God who is the creator of all things. It's God that has created us. This is just to remind us just how weak we are in His sight. And then it says, we are His people and the sheep of His pasture. You know what that means? God looks at us as sheep, as a flock that needs to be herded, that needs to be brought forth in green pastures. And, and, and Jesus Christ is given three titles in the New Testament. He's given the title of the Good Shepherd, the Chief Shepherd, and the, the Great Shepherd. The Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd, and the Chief Shepherd. And the reason why He's given us these titles is so that we're reminded of, of, of God as, as our shepherd, as our leader, as the one we're trying to seek after, that He's good, that He wants the best for us, that He's great. There's nothing greater than He that, that we ought to follow and that He's our chief shepherd. Okay, we, we, churches, we're given shepherds, we're given pastors. I'm one of those things. I'm one of those pastors. But you know what? There's a pastor over me. That's the chief, the primary one, the chief shepherd who is the shepherd above all of us. So reminded here that we're the sheep of his pasture. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Because shepherds have to look after the sheep, right? They lead the sheep, and that's what God wants for our lives. He wants to look after us. He wants to protect us. He wants to uh, comfort us. Verse number four. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Of course, these gates, these courts, is, is the Old Testament temple, which is the house of God. Again, once again, the house of God in the New Testament. What is it? It's the local church, right? When we come into the local uh, church or we come before His presence, even if we come before Him in prayer, it says, come with thanksgiving. Let's not forget to thank God for the wonderful things that He's given us. I thank God for this church all the time. You know, and when we come, we have our needs, we have our worries, we have our concerns that we want to bring before the Lord. But the best thing to do before you bring those concerns, just remind yourself, and, and, and of the blessings that God has given you. Remind yourself of the answered prayers that God has answered for you. And come before he, Him with thanksgiving. All the wonderful gifts, all the blessings, the family, the friends, the people that you know, your brothers and sisters. Thank God for all these things. And that will help you to have that grateful heart. It will it'll, it'll alleviate the heaviness of your burdens that you struggle through life. It says, uh, be thankful unto Him and bless His name. And that's what we do when we come to church and we praise His, his praises. We praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we ought to do. We ought to bless Him. Bless the Lord. And verse number 5. For the Lord is good. It needs to be reminded again, the good shepherd. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Hey, look. Do you think if God has given us our, the Bible and He wants us to walk after His past, do you think He does it to destroy us? Do you think He does it to give us to put evil in our lives, for us to, to sin? No. He does it for our good. The Lord is good. Whatever. Listen. Sometimes it's hard to obey the, the commandments of God. It is hard. Sometimes it may seem contradictive, you know, to, to the way the world wants you to live. But His ways are good. It says His mercy is everlasting. So when you sin, when you defile yourself, when you're in wickedness, you know what? God, it says His mercy is everlasting. His mercy lasts forever. Okay, this is why when, when we, get, we, we come to His mercy, we receive His mercy by believing on Christ. It's eternal life. It's once saved, always saved. Because His mercy is everlasting. He's never going to run out of mercy for you. Okay? And it says, And His truth endureth to all generations. You know what that means? That means in the generation today, our, our generation, we have His truth. And I covered this not long ago. Right? He's given us His King James Bible. He's given us the Word of God, the perfect, pure, preserved Word of God for, to all generations. And you know what? It says His truth endureth to all generations. It's not like his, it, it was true in the time of David or in the time of the psalmist, and now it's no longer true. No, once it's true, it's always true. 
When the Bible says that marriage is between man and woman, that's the truth, it's always true. You know, no matter what, how the government's trying to change things with, with our laws and redefine things, hey, they're trying to make false things true, but no, the truth of God endureth forever to all generations. It's never going to change. Thank God that we can make a joyful noise unto Him. Let's pray.